Good evening. Here we are in Proverbs chapter 14. If you're working with us uh, through the book of Proverbs, you can always catch up if you've missed too. I think they're all still on there, 1 through 13. But we're in chapter 14, so let's zip through it here. 34, 35 verses, looks like. We're in that little section of Proverbs that's like couplets, is that the technical term, but it's like two sides of the coin. I say flip the coin over, looks at things two different ways. Like this one, every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish plucks it down with her hands. So I guess the, you can ask the question there, are you building your family up or are you destroying your home by your actions? A wise woman builds up her house, but the foolish plucks it down with her hands, her actions. He that walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. Remember our outline through Proverbs, fear the Lord, get a good education, don't be lazy. Here we are, so if you're going to fear the Lord, then you're going to walk around uprightly. But, flip it over, he that is perverse in his ways despises him. If you're living in a perverse way, it says, you know what, problem is that you don't fear the Lord, you despise him. Number three, in the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Pride is that arrogant kind of pride, that kind of pride that thinks you're better than everybody, including God. That was the devil's sin, remember? In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but, flip it over, the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Something about our speech. There's a lot to do about our mouth in Proverbs, remember? Verse 4 is kind of funny to me, but it makes a point here. It says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. And you say, well, I guess uh, that's for the lazy guy. Here's our outline. Don't be lazy. The old lazy guy says, you know, I have to clean up that ox crib all the time. They're just out there making a mess and everything. I'm going to get rid of them oxen, and I won't have to work like that anymore. <laughs> Don't be lazy. We're no oxen or the cribs clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. That's your way of making a living back then, right? So you need them ox, but the lazy guy says, I'm going to get rid of them. I'm having to work too much cleaning up after them. And then he next one. That's the way it works today, too. And one bit of poverty leads to the next one. You're lazy in one area, and it affects the next one down the line until you're just a just impoverished, lazy person. Verse 5. A faithful witness will not lie. But, flip it over, a false witness will utter, lie, will utter lies. So I guess, are you a faithful witness for the Lord? Or is your life showing that you really, whatever you're saying with your words, is just a, a false witness? There's no power in that. But if you live for the Lord and you can speak for the Lord then. A scorner, verse 6, seeks wisdom. But he can't find it. <laughs> Finds it not. Flip it over. But knowledge is easy to him that understands. Now, I would say, follow us under or get a good education, and a good education always begins with the foundation of a good biblical education, too. And the scorner who scoffs at God his word, he'll never find any real wisdom, but knowledge is easy to under him that understands. Seven, go from the presence of the foolish man. Just get away from him when you perceive not in him the lips of knowledge. Verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent or wise is to understand his way. And this is not capitalized in the King James. I don't know. It didn't look in the other versions. But uh, in the Hebrew, it didn't have punctuation and capitalization. This could be the wisdom of the prudent or the wisdom of the wise people is to understand his way. <laughs> that, that's the beginning, ain't it? Fear the Lord and get good education. Understand his way. And that's wisdom. But flip it over. The folly of fools is deceit. And what's a fool? The Bible gives us a definition. It says a fool is somebody that said in their heart that there is no God. And here we see verse 9 also what fools do. Fools make a mock at sin. They laugh about it. And they, they don't understand the fear of the sin. They don't have the fear of the Lord in them. So they make a mockery at sin. But flip it over. Among the righteous there's favor. Verse 10, the heart knows his own bitterness, and the stranger doth not enter, enter meddle with his joy. You know, sometimes you can have heartache, and it's just your business, and, but sometimes you can have joy in your heart, and uh, if you got joy of your Lord in your heart, guess what? The stranger can't really take that away from you, can he? Verse 11, the house of the wicked be, will be overthrown. A lot of these, we look at them in the light of eternity. It says, hey, the 
the house of the wicked, judgment's coming. It will be overthrown. But, flip it over, the tabernacle of the upright will flourish. God will bless that. Verse 12, there's a way, this is repeated more than once in the book of Proverbs, verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, there's a lot of things out there that there, there's religions and things out there that people can offer this, and you think, well, that seems right. And But the Bible says uh, about some of them that, the, boy, they end in death, though, eternal death. So you always, it ain't just how it seems to you. You get in the Word of God and say, is this what God says is right or not? Because our opinions are not above the Word of God. God's word is way above any of our seeming, feeling, opinion kind of thing. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So it was the wrong way, wasn't it? Verse 13. Even in laughter, the heart's sorrowful. Sometimes you can just be grieving, and even if you're laughing on the outside, you're hurting on the inside. And the end of that mirth is heaviness, even if you're laughing. Verse 14. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, or sometimes I've heard it say he'll hang himself with his own rope, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. And a good man, remember the New Testament says, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, a relationship with God through him, there is none good, no, not one, but a good man has placed his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll be satisfied from himself. He'll be content. There's a contentment that comes with knowing that you've trusted in the Lord and that you're on your way to heaven and come what may, that uh, you belong to the Lord. There's just a peace and contentment that comes with that. You'll be filled, uh, you'll be satisfied from yourself. Fifteen, the simple, that means, uh, that's a kind way of saying the stupid. <laughs> the simple believes every word. Boy, there's a lot of people living around us like that. They believe every word that they say, except uh, if it's God's word, I guess they have trouble at it, but... Uh, I mean, uh, I read it on the internet. It has to be true, right? <laughs> you know why there's so many scammers around? Because they're doing good at it. Because there's a lot of simple people back there that are gullible. And uh, they believe every word. The Bible says, uh, you know, we Christians, says, you need to practice discernment. And that's tough sometimes. You got to pray for it, and sometimes it's still tough. Be, be discerning. We're living in a world where, boy, you need to be discerning. But the simple just believes every word. But the prudent man or the wise man, he looks well to his going. He looks very well before he takes a step in that direction. 16. A wise man fears and departs from evil. What's he fearing? He's fear of the Lord, right? Give me fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord, get a good education, don't be lazy. And the wise man, he does fear, fears God. So he departs from evil. He respects God, has a relationship with him, and he wants to avoid what God calls evil. But flip the coin over, and the fool rages and is confident. I guess he's most confident as he won't ever have to answer for what he's doing. He may even be confident that there is no God, but he's going to step into eternity and find out that he was wrong, and his confidence will be shattered. Verse 17, he that's soon angry, a lot of people are living in the world today with anger problems. Ain't nothing wrong with getting angry. That's a God-given emotion. Sometimes you have to get angry or else psychologists say if you keep it bottled up inside of you, it'll ooze out in the thing called depression. So there's nothing wrong with getting angry. That's how God lets us release a lot of these emotions. But the Bible says, be angry. New Testament says, be angry. It don't say, don't be angry. It just says, be angry and sin not. You got to get angry sometimes, but be careful about it because you're, you're kind of getting on thin ice. You can get in trouble getting angry sometimes. But if you get angry at the least little thing, at the least little bit all the time, you got an anger problem. And that's what this guy here is. He that's soon angry acts foolishly, dealeth foolishly. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Well, we're seeing a lot of that, all these shootings and people running cars through Christmas parades. Just every time he turns it, there's people with wicked devices and oh, just the whole, whole world hates them. They're not famous, they become infamous. The simple 
inherit folly or foolishness. But the prudent or the wise, they're crowned with knowledge. Because they fear the Lord, they get a good biblical education that leads to a lot more education, and they're not lazy. 19. The evil bow before the good. Now, there's one that I probably have to look at in the light of eternity. One day, the justice is going to occur. It don't always occur in this world, but it'll all wash out in the judgment. And the Bible says, guess what? The evil will bow before the good. And the wicked will bow before the gates of the righteous. Verse 20. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. So what kind of neighbor is that? It ain't a good one if he hates somebody because he's poor. But the rich has many friends. That's just a simple statement of what the world's like today. The rich people got a lot of friends, but the poor are often hated. But I think these verses really go together. But 21 too explains it. Because he that despises his neighbor sins. If you hate if you hate your neighbor for any reason, then it's just a it's sin. But he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. God had mercy on us and be merciful to other people. Verse twenty two, do they not err or mistake that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. Everybody's in one camp or the other. What, are you devising evil or are you devising good? Well, I need God's mercy, don't you? <laughs> so I'm going to be in that camp as best I can, try to devise good things. Verse 23. In all labor, there's profit. Don't be lazy. In all labor, there's profit. Flip the coin over. But the talk of the lips tends only to penury or poverty. You and I both know folks like that. They got good plans and they talk a good game, but that's all they ever do. <laughs> and it only leads to more poverty. You, they got to put some action with the talk, don't you? 24, the crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. 25, two sides of this coin, watch it. It's got a true witness and a deceitful witness. A true witness delivers souls. But a deceitful witness speaks lies. And I'd say that again. Let's look at it this way. you got two sides of the coin. And are you a true witness or are you a deceitful witness? Now, you can witness for the Lord all you want. But if your life ain't lining up with the words that you're sharing with people, then you're a deceitful witness. And people see that and you do more damage than you do good. Be careful of the life you lead, for that's the only Bible some folks will ever read. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness That'd be the hypocrite. He speaks lies. 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Fear of the Lord. There we go again. And this guy that fears the Lord has strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Because he's brought his children to church. And he's brought them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And their ultimate place of refuge is in the Lord. And 27, the fear of the Lord Fear the Lord, remember. That's a fountain of life, eternal life. It begins with having a reverent respect to God. Fear the Lord. And it, it'll cause you to depart from the snares of death. That's eternal death. 28, I, I love this verse. I'm a preacher. This is a good church verse. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. If you've got a good crowd of church, you're honoring the Lord and the king. But in the want of people or the lack of people is the destruction of the prince. It's a sad thing to see the churches half empty or less. 29, he that's slow to wrath, see the other guy was quick to, to get angry over here we was talking about. We get down to verse 29, he's talking about the guy that's slow to anger. He that's slow to wrath is of great understanding. God gets mad, do you know that? One of the most famous sermons ever preached, Jonathan Edwards, was sinners in the hands of an angry God. God is love, but God gets mad too, don't he? But guess what? God is slow to anger. He's long-suffering. He's very patient. We're supposed to be like that too. He that's slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalts folly or foolishness. Verse 30, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. 
That's Leviticus 17:11. I, I love that verse. It's Moses wrote that long ago under the inspiration of the Spirit. He said, the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. We know now it's the heart that pumps the blood around. That's the life that it gives to the flesh. That's a true medical understanding and it's too spiritual understanding too because he went on to say because it's the, life, it's the blood that makes atonement for the soul. That was a glimpse of Christ that was going to come and shed his blood to make us at one with God the way it's meant to be. Atonement, at one with God the way it's meant to be. So, a sound heart, verse 30, 30, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. Flip the coin over. But envy, or jealousness, he says that's the rottenness of the bones. 31, he that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. You know, Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. But he that honoreth him has mercy on the poor. Or if you honor God, you have mercy on the poor. And remember, sometimes there's, there's two kinds of poor. There's the honest poor that we ought to have mercy on and help and give them a hand up. And then there's the lazy poor that this book we've been reading here, Proverbs, just condemns over and over again. Don't be lazy. And you have to discern to know the difference of who we need to have compassion on and help and who we're sending by helping. Because we're not helping, we're enabling, which is really hurting some people. 32, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. We'll look at that in the light of eternity, that the wicked will be driven away from the presence of God by their own wickedness. But the righteous who have trusted in Jesus and been declared righteous by grace through faith, they've got hope at the time of death. 33, wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding. Get a good education. Begin with the biblical education and continue but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Before long, you know there's a fool in the midst. 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. Boy, here's a good verse to stamp over America because we're flip-flopping from one to the other one, I'm afraid, right now. But we've got hope because we're still praying. We're still alive, right, Christians? Righteousness exalts. It lifts up a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And the Bible says the nations that forget God will be turned into hell. They'll be judged by God. 35, the king's favor is toward a wise servant. And if you put a capital K on that, then the king Jesus' favor is toward his wise servants. And you know why they're wise? It's because they were wise enough to claim the gospel for themselves. That the gospel told them that they were sinners in need of a savior. And by grace through faith, they turned to the Lord. And the king's favor was made toward them. Flip it over. But his wrath, that's the king's wrath, is against him that causes shame. Don't cause him shame by refusing his gracious gift of God's only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. See you next week.